Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Let's Play with 401 Games. Today we are featuring a game called Emotep, which was nominated for the Spiel des Jahres Award this year, mm -hmm. only losing out to Codenames. I think anyone would lose to Codenames at this point. Yeah, <laughs> Codenames is good. Yeah, but it is a fantastic game, and I'm joined by the awesome Chris. How would you tell us about yourself? Sure, so uh, I'm Chris, I live in Toronto, uh, designer of Lanterns to Harvest Festival, so when Victoria mentioned code names, I was like, okay, Lanterns was nominated for a few awards that code names won, so I, I feel for this. But uh, yes, uh, I'm excited to play uh, Emotep. Great, yeah. Okay, so Emotep is a game uh, named after the famous builder of Egypt, Master Builder. Mm -hmm. And we are apprentice builders trying to follow in his footsteps to build, I guess, the greatness of Egypt. And it's a very thematic game, so mm -hmm. for two players, we are playing with uh, the two-player boat cards. Mm -hmm. And these dictate which boats are in play each round, so you can see here. Uh, so these at the top will tell me how many players are there for each card and then how many boats are there in each round. There are two, three, four, five, six, seven rounds in a game. Uh, the game ends when we use all seven cards. So those go face down and we put the first one face up so that tells us which boats we're using. Yep. So four, three, two, two. little tiny ones. Exactly. Okay, now the cool thing about Emotap is it's kind of a play on worker placement a bit and resource management. So we all start off with some cubes. I'm gonna be first player, so I start off with two. Yep, and I start off with three. Three, yeah. Because there is an advantage to turn order, so that's why people who go a little later get a bit more of a resource advantage. Exactly. But anyways, how you play your turn is you can choose to either take a stone, place it on a ship, or you can choose to take two from the supply of, uh, of from the quarry or you can choose to sail the ship to any of these five locations and they each have different effects for the game uh, that we'll get into a little later but yes and you cannot sail a ship until it's reached its minimum capacity so for example on this ship here you guys can see this this has three stones up there, which tells me I can't sail this ship anywhere unless there's at least three stones on there. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the tiny one, it's only a one person boat. So there's a bit of strategy in how you sail and also, I guess, the order in which you place the stones. Exactly. So let's say we have this ship and I would like to sail it somewhere. Mm -hmm. If I were to sail it to the obelisk, they just get unloaded to their appropriate colors right there and how the obelisk is scored is at the end of the game whoever has the tallest gets the requisite amount of points so 10 points for number one and a whopping one point for number two <laughs> so in a two-player game there's only the top spot yeah no awesome. runner-up <laughs> yeah the winner you lose yeah now if i were to sail this instead to the burial chamber we have to follow the arrows depending on the on the placement of the Cube, so I would place it like that, and like that, and like that. And at the end of the game, how the burial chamber is scored is you get points for every cluster of your color that you had. So right now, let's say this is the end of the game. I mean, it's a very small burial chamber, <laughs> but I would only get one point for my one stone, but Chris would get three points because he has two stones touching each other and it can snake around. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the pyramids, if we were to sail to the pyramids, I would immediately score two points for the top one. one he gets one point mm -hmm. and then another three points. So four points total scoring. And uh, the pyramid keeps going until you reach the apex. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now last, oh, last, but second last, temple. The temple is scored at the end of every round, depending on what is visible from the bird's eye view. So right now at the end of this round, I would only score one point, whereas Chris would get two. But later on, let's say we had more cubes, like so. Let's say Chris covers up mine, mm -hmm. I cover up one of his, and he covers up his own again, because you have to do it in a certain order. So at the end of the game, I would get two, and he would get two based off of what's seen from above. Correct. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then lastly, the market. Pretty straightforward. 
Uh, whoever is first in line, though, gets first pick of the cards available in the market. So let's say I pick this card, and then Chris gets to pick what any two of his choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, there you go. go. And then they wouldn't be replenished until the end of the round. Right. Oh, you got the right cards. Yeah, there. I yeah. got the right cards. <laughs> Those are board cards. Exactly. Okay. So a bit of explanation on the various market cards. Mm -hmm. One of each color. There you go. Okay, so now I'm going to explain the market cards a bit so you know what's going on. Uh, there are some cards here, like the statue. This here doesn't affect scoring on the rest of the board, but if you collect enough of it, you'll notice that the points multiply. So it's good to pay attention to your opponents if they're collecting a lot of this set mm -hmm. so that you can stop their exponential scoring at the end. And then we have the blue ones here. So these often give you an advantage to either place a stone and immediately sail a ship, which allows you to take more than one action during your turn. That's a very, very powerful card to keep in your hand. Mm -hmm. And we also have red cards. These come into effect immediately once you purchase them. In this case, you place one stone from the quarry onto your obelisk. So they get immediate rewards from the red cards. And then lastly, these green cards are very interesting in terms of scoring. Oftentimes, you get to score based on how well these different sections of Egypt did. So in this case, I get one point for every three stones in the burial chamber. That means I would like it if the burial chamber had a lot of stones. It doesn't matter what color. It could be his color, my color, but I, I get the score. I get the points regardless. Right. All right, so let's start off the game. And uh, you'll notice that there are only two colors in play because we're playing the two-player variant. And uh, it is balanced for two that way. Any of these extra colors, this does play up to four people. We don't need them, so we're going to put them back in the box. Mm -hmm. And we're going to keep our score with this tracker up here. Cool. All right. So why don't I start off? Um, I'm going to use my turn to place one on the big ship. OK. I'm going to grab two stones from the quarry cool. to max out my supply. Go ahead. Um, I'm going to put another stone on the big ship. Okay, <laughs> I may as well fill that big ship up now since it's jumping on my boat. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> uh, I think I will replenish my supply because I get. Okay. Uh, I'm going to drop a stone on here. I'm going to drop a stone here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to sail that to... Let's sail that to the temple. The temple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now Victoria's going to unload here, unload here. I'm going to unload here, and she's going to unload here. All right. Okay, so correction, you actually get three stones from the quarry and not two, so we did rectify that real quick. Mm -hmm. And now we're back on track. Sweet. Um, I'm gonna put mine on your boat. I like sharing boats. Okay, uh, I don't. <laughs> uh, I am going to, uh, let's fill that out with my stone. Here you go. All right. Let's sail this to the burial chamber. That's not good. It's not, not what you wanted, is it? No. And you'll notice that once a ship has sailed to a slot, it can't sail again to that same slot. Mm -hmm. uh, let's try this small boat right here. Oh, you want the small boat, eh? I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow you. All right, we're going to the market. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I got first pick. I'm going to select. Huh. Let's go with. I like the one times action place one stone on one ship and sail a ship to a site. So you'll notice that it's blue. I can hold on to this on my um, in my supply and I don't have to use it until I want to. Uh, at the end of the game, should I have not used it, I actually gain one point for it. All right, oh. and did he refill or I've got that point? Uh, I'll probably refill. I mean, we can't. Exactly, oh. we can't go oh, in there. Well, it doesn't refill until I pick one. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct, that's it. That's right, because you don't. That's right. Um, Let's see, hammer or lever? Mm -hmm. I think I'll take King the hammer. I like that get three quote, 
We've got three stones and put a stone on our ship that's all in good. one swoop. Okay, so that's nice. done. Uh, whose turn was it? My turn? Okay, it is uh, your turn. Yeah, so. all right. Well, my stone supply is gone, so wait, wait, wait. <laughs> should I? Should I not? Yeah, actually, I'm going to use my hammer. Oh, wow. So I'm going to excavate three stones, which is what I was going to do anyways. Mm -hmm. And I get to place one stone on a ship immediately. So right. it's like I took two turns in a row. Exactly. And I guess they'll, they'll discard pile. <laughs> I'm gonna put my fate in your hands so I'm gonna join you on that ship. <gasps> I'm gonna take the wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go to the pyramids. Okay. So I get two points immediately yep. and you get one. That's correct. And that's the end of that round, so let's mm -hmm. flip over a new card. Right. Okay, let's reset the boats. Yep. So you need two threes, you four. need a four, and you need a one. The baby. Yep. Baby go. boat. Oh, it's a lonely boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I assume that I start the next round? Yep. Okay, let's refill the market as well. Okay, chisel and a paved path. Um, I am going to replenish my stock. Okay, so I take three from the quarry. Go ahead. Hmm. I'm going to put one on the boat. Okay. Uh, let's do this. I'm going to drop one stone onto the big boat. Okay. Um, I'm going to drop one stone onto the big boat as well. Okay, follow suit. All right, well, <laughs> that's a thing that happened. Exactly. Uh, well, I'm going to... I don't need to sail it. You know what? I'll let you decide where to sail it. Okay. I don't really care. I'm going to grab three stones from the quarry. <laughs> well, that's pretty good because I'm going to use my sail card to do that. So Ooh. I do have the ability to do so. So discarding the sail to place one stone on a ship, which is the big boat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to send it over to the pyramids. Ooh. So I think I've maximized my scoring potential. I think I've... Uh, to take on other points for myself. So, one, so two, three. three Victoria is only going to score two for that. Oh, okay. I'm going to score four for the next one, two, three. square. Oh, that's worth four. And three for the final wow. square. Wow. Good job. Thank you. Okay. Go right ahead. Last round. There you go. This game. How long was this game? I think uh, 20, twenty minutes tops. Minutes, that's with, not bad. with explanations for a two-player game, that's pretty uh, pretty good. Yeah. It does have more strategy, and these boards are double-sided. I will show you at the end, mm -hmm. but it gets more complicated if, in case this is a little too simple after a while. Yeah. So, I get to go first. You do. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do this boat. Okay. I like the three-player boat. Let's take my last stones from the pile. You have run out of stones. I have. <laughs> have to be very efficient. Um, I guess I will take three stones. Okay. Let's start off this big one. I will place mine. I'm gonna join your little big one. Your big one. Okay. Place on small one. Small one? Mm -hmm. mm. I'm going to sail you to the temple. Okay. That changes nothing. That does your change turn. nothing. <laughs> uh, I am going to put my faith in your hands and go here. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I'm going to sail this ship, okay. but I have the lever, mm -hmm. so I get to decide what order the stones go. Nice play. So we're just going to do this, okay. and you can do that. All right. Excellent. Okay. And it's your turn. Well, I don't have any stones left, so I think it's uh, your turn again. Oh man, do we just keep going until... 
I don't know. I think so. Yeah. I guess I'll just breeze through my turn then. I, uh, I mean, I could milk it out and grab more, but I, that's not sportsmanship like of me. <laughs> so I'll take uh, my last turn. Okay. I'm not gonna bother with my last stone. Mm -hmm. And I will put that to the pyramid. Good play. So three and four, that's seven yeah. points. You got it. Okay. okay. Whatever. So <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna do the end game scoring for the uh, for the cubes here. Okay, so pyramids we don't have to worry about right? because we did that as we went. Yep. But let's do obelisk, and none of us have green cards. Correct. Unfortunately, yeah. Or else, uh, for example, this one. I thought about taking this one, but we never went to the market. No. So <laughs> I would have gotten points for every cube in the pyramid, and this one right. is every cube in the obelisk. Someone should have taken that. Yep. With a lot. All right, so obelisk, I think I've got 10 points. You do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But you do get one. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the one. Yep. And now the burial chamber. Yep. Okay, so we'll Move those. get rid of that. Nice. So now you guys can see, you guys can kind of see this, yep. Uh, so you get one point. Woohoo. Um, one, two, three, that is worth six points. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's another six points. Yep. And that yep. two is worth three. You got it. I have a four, so that's worth ten points. Mm -hmm. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then another four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So that was done. The temple. Pyramid. Oh, and uh, oh, the temple we don't need to worry about because we scored at the end of the round, right? Right. Well, we, we didn't score the end. Okay. Round. Oh, we did not score the no. end yet. Okay. Yep. So you get three. One, two, three, and you get one. One. There you go. Okay. All right, and that was Emota. Yes, you are yes, the winner. Yes, <laughs> I won. Uh, and uh, as we said, there are double sides, two sides mm -hmm. to these. See, there's a flip it over. Says A. That's for the starting tile, and the B. That's for when for more advanced play, and um, these ones are points are earned per row for most to fewest stones. So this is actually a bit more difficult to score and it's a bit more strategic to figure out than mm. the A side, where it's just very straightforward. If it's a cluster, you get points. Same thing with the pyramid. This is the very basic pyramid. But if I flip it over, there's multiple pyramids now Ooh. that you can compete for. I like that. That is great, yeah. And they all have double sides. Mm -hmm. So I I think Emotab is a great game and certainly deserves its nomination. Yes, 100%. Um, yeah. So how'd you like that as a two-player game? I thought it was great. Uh, the two-player game, you really have, uh, as I mentioned, my fate was in Victoria's hand a lot of times. So <laughs> when I placed my last stone on some boats, she had the opportunity to sail them off. I was like, okay, that's not where I want to place my stone, but at least I got a, a couple points off of that. So I really like that nature where you are helping your opponents, but you primarily want to help yourself. And it's, that's the same with Lantris as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that um, even though it's a very strategic game for two players, it doesn't fall off. No. Where some, some games, they have a two player version, it just feels a little underwhelming. Right. And this went really fast, so it I'm did. very happy with it. <laughs> you like <laughs> fast games? Yes. Fast games mean more games in the night. Great, yeah. Well, if you guys want to quickly try Emotep, it is available here at 401 Games' library upstairs for you guys to play before you buy. Or if you'd like to purchase it for your own collection, we do have it on sale here at 518 Young Street, or you can get it online at 401games.ca. That's been an episode of Let's Play. Thanks for joining us, guys. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>